Um, is it possible? Uh, are are we getting the solution for our homeworks? No, you won't. We won't. Oh. You can ask questions, but you won't get your solutions. Uh, are we getting the feedback? Which one we did wrong or correct? Are me? If we do, uh, how we know which one we did it right or wrong? Well, it's it's your decision. Oh. You should know by now. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, uh, you, you can ask questions, but uh, most of the problems, well, you should you should have a good feeling what to do with it. If you don't, yeah. Have any feeling what to do, then you can ask questions here or in the office hours. But uh, mostly like 90% of it, you should uh, get a good feeling what to do. Uh, yeah, I was worried about the uh, dynamic question with the dampener uh, that it was simulating the car's movement on a sign in a soda. Just uh, wanted to make sure I got Why don't you be correct. specific? Tell me the problem number and we'll discuss it. Because you just give me some kind of uh liberal arts question give me the problem number uh problem 1.29 okay i mean it's a straightforward but i just wanted to know if i got the uh, signs correct Just a second, let me get to the problems. 1.29. Now this is a problem from your uh, um, from your system dynamics class. Uh, did you graduate from Cal Poly? Uh, no, I came from UCI and I took this class back in 2017 or 18. Doesn't matter, but you, you, this yeah. was in the system dynamics and in probably in the controls and everywhere else, okay. Let me try to do it. Hang on a second. See if, if it's a good copy. Oh, let's just reduce the size of this thing. Just a second, let me just try to reduce the horizontal dimensions of this one, because it's kind of too large. Oh, let me see. Reduce this one, but how do I reduce the size horizontally? Uh, on the free body diagram for the M, uh, I assume MG is downward, then... Uh, you don't uh, need any MG. There's no MG? In controls problem, it's no MG. You always measure it from the from the static position, so MG is cancelled out. If you had a dynamics class, I don't know what you guys do in UCI, but I mean, it's uh, vibration and dynamics. No MG. Okay, hang on a second. Let me just try to reduce. Can you guys uh, see, uh, let me see. 
share screen with sorry. Can you guys see the uh, one note? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm trying to reduce horizontal dimension of fighting with this software. Mm, okay. You can zoom out. Uh, not in uh, what's his name? Not in one note. Uh, let's see where it is. If you hold the control and then uh, move your uh, mouse scroll out of back and forth part, it should zoom in, zoom out. No, it doesn't, right? No. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. No. Let me try it again, just a sec. Okay. All right, hang on a second. Let me open the OneNote again. Let's see how it works. Okay, hang on a sec. Okay, just a second. All right. Okay, let's let me just do it from this. Okay. Okay, put it all right. A C Okay, here it is. Mass spring dash pot. See what else is there. Wheel. Wheel is Y, mass is X. Mass is X of T. Wheel is Y of T. And we have Y equals to A sine of AZ. Y equals to A sine of AZ. President, please share your screen. Pardon me? Yeah, just a second. Um, 
let's see what else is there. Z equals to VT. Z equals to VT. Okay. Well, the free body diagram is AX CX dot. Well, sorry, no. X minus Y. Right. C x dot minus y dot okay all right so that's probably it right okay so we write down a minus k x minus y minus c x dot minus y dot equals to m x double dot all right but that's basically it. Uh, what, what else they want there, right? Okay, let's look at there. I see. Uh, that's it. So then uh, we put y in the equation and then y dot, right? That's right. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's it. So this 2 pi over, over p is not necessary. Right? As long as you have a, the the p is needed to find the a, or the a is needed to find the p. Right? Okay. Any other questions? No questions. All right. Okay. Today we're going to review some more things. All right, so Newtonian, Newton, Euler, dynamics for systems of particle for system of particles. Okay, so here it is M1, M2, M sub i, etc. And we have this is R1 and etc. So we have that the M in inertial reference frame. We have M. R I double dot equals to F I external plus summation of F I J over J one to N J not equal to I. All right. I write it down for all the particles I equals to one, etc. in and they add them up over I and we'll have summation of MI RI double dot. These are by the way are vectors equals to summation of F external I plus summation of FI summation of J FIJ. Now this sum is zero because FIJ plus FJI equals to zero by Newton's third law. These are forces acting between the particles and this external force, external force on particle I. Okay. So if we introduce uh, our center of mass 
as summation of mi ri over summation of mi, which is, we'll get that the left side is equal to our center of mass double dot equals to summation of mi ri double dot over the m, which is this guy, right? So the result is that M, R center of mass, double dot, equals to summation of external forces. Uh, pardon me. All right. On the particles, all right. That's the Newton's law for the system of particles. If we multiply it by dt and integrate with time from um, a zero to t, you will have that the uh, integral of ri double dot dt from zero from make it from time one to time two will be R, uh, let's see, RC, will be RC at time T2 dot minus RC at time T1. So the result of this will have that the impulse at time T2 minus impulse of time t1 equals to the integral of force resultant dt from t1 to t2. Where p of t p is the linear momentum, so it's, well, actually, linear momentum law. He is, linear momentum is summation, is the summation of mi uh, vi, which is summation of mi ri dot, okay. That's the linear momentum. Of the system. So the increment of linear momentum equals to impulse of the force. And if the impulse of the force is zero, if summation of force integral zero to t with force is zero, then we have the conservation of linear momentum for the system. Does it ring a bell? Yes. Okay. Or a system of particles. which means that P at T2 equals to P of T1, okay. Now we take the same equation and we get into the angular items. So we'll have that the uh, MI RI double dot equals to, again, we write down F external I plus summation of F into particles. Uh, there's going to be J's from one to N, J not equal to I, right? And that's for I equals to one, two, et cetera, N. Now you take this equation and pre-multiply by 
All right. Remember, we're in initial frame, and O is the stationary origin. And then the left side will be Ri cross product with um, Mi Ri double dot equals to summation of Ri cross product with F external I. Uh, let's just put it summation over I from one to N, summation from one to N. So pre-multiple then summate. All right, let's make it like this. Plus this one will be summation, summation over I over J, R I cross border with F I J. Let's look at it together, the left side. The left side can be written down as D over DT, of course, of summation of RI cross per with MI RI dot. Because this is equal to summation of Ri dot cross product with Mi Ri dot. And that's a zero because these two are identical. Plus summation of Ri cross product with Mi Ri double dot. And that's what we have right here. So therefore we can write it down like this. So the left side is left side is d over dt of summation of ri cross product with mi vi let's put it this way so whatever is in parentheses is called the angular momentum of the system of particles about fixed origin, okay? And we call it H sub O. So the left side is D over DT of H sub O. Now on the right, the first term on the right will leave like this. First term is on the right. The first term is summation of Ri cross product with F external I. That's a moment or resultant moment about the origin of all the external forces, of all external forces acting on the system of particles. And we call it the M about O. That's the first term. The second term, second term on the right. Summation of R I, double summation over I, J equals to I, uh, equals to one to N, but J is not equal to I. R I cross per with F I J. Well, this can be written as consisting of sums, consists of pairs like this. 
Ri cross product with Fij plus Rj cross product with Fji. But Fji equals to minus Fij. Newton's third law. The result is these pairs are, they're equal to Ri cross product with Fij minus Rj cross product with Fij, which is gonna be Ri minus Rj cross product with Fij. At this point, you declare that uh, we consider that interparticle forces are central. That means that if you have particle I and particle J, the force on particle I is directed along this one. And the force on particle J is like this. However, the Ri minus Rj is directed along the same line. It's Ri relative to J, which is this one. Or the other world. That's R I relative to J. So therefore, that sum, these two are parallel. So we can say that this one is zero. And so the result of this that uh, in an inertial frame. The moment about O, which is fixed point, equals to the rate of change of angular momentum about this point. That's Newton or the law, right? Now, what if we have a non-inertial frame? Consider a frame at point A that accelerates, it has acceleration, A sub A relative to the inertia frame. Well, we can consider it inertial if we add inertia force into any into all the particle inertia forces to all the particles. That means that mi, ri, double dot, relative to A equals to the same equation that we had before, which means it's going to be the F external i 
force doesn't change, plus summation of Fij, and that's for J1 to, to N, and plus the inertia force. Inertia force is minus Mi times acceleration of A. That's inertia force acting on the particles, all right? Therefore, our equation will be, before the equation will have the moment about A this time, plus the summation of Ri cross product with minus mi aa the force is there right okay ri relative to a of course right okay now equals to the angular momentum about point a so by now the a is considered inertial we just added the forces and that's it Now let's tackle the second term. That means M sub A equals to summation of M I, R I relative to A cross product with A sub A. Okay. Plus D over DT of H A. <laughs> Excuse me. What is this thing here? This thing is M times R of center of mass relative to A. That's what this one is. M is the total mass of the system. So the result is we have the MA equals to mass of the system times R center of mass relative to A, cross product with A sub A, and plus the rate of change of angular momentum about point A. Okay. Now the question is, in what case this term this equation loses the first term on the right. In which case, we will have just moment about A equals rate of change of angular momentum about A. Well, it's when this cross product is zero. So that can be one of the three cases. A, A sub A equals to zero. That means A is basically is the O, the fixed point. That we already discussed. Second case is most important. R of C relative to A is zero. That means a is center of mass of the system. So therefore, we write down that this equation, m about center of mass equals to the rate of change of h about center of mass. That's another form of Euler equation. That's basically it. And again, if M about center of mass is zero, we have that H center of mass is conserved. All right. That's in brief, the Newton order laws. Let's see, do they have it for the rigid body in the book yet? I don't remember. Okay. 
Yeah, let's do one more thing, and that's the. Uh, kinetic energy. Well, we'll do it a later time when we get to rigid body. Now let's have some examples. Uh, you guys finished writing this one? Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's look at some example. But um Yeah, let's look at problem 174. We have a frictionless surface. Particle is moving on a circle, a radius r. The particle is of mass m, no friction. And the string is here. Hang on a second. Okay. 
and there is a force F is applied initially particle has angular velocity omega 1 so as it moves around it's omega 1 and that's R1 Force F is applied. So the radius becomes R2 less than R1. All right, so you pull down the string. There is no friction anywhere here. That's a string. The force is constant. Find the value of force and the new angular velocity. This is point O. The moment of force about point O is zero because it's passing through the point O. Therefore, the angular momentum of the particle is conserved. Now that means that m times the r1 times r1 omega 1 equals to m times r2 times r2 omega 2. And from here, the m cancels out. And we have that the omega 2 equals to omega 1, R1 squared over R2 squared. Okay. Now, the value of the force, the work energy. F times the distance D, and that D is This is going to be the D, all right. That's the work of the force equals to the final kinetic energy, kinetic energy two minus kinetic energy one. Kinetic energy two is going to be the M, one half of M times R2 omega 2 squared minus one half of M R1 omega 1 squared. Plugging in the omega 2 that we found, it's 
going to be one half of m r2 and omega 2 is r1 squared over r2 squared. times omega 1, all that squared minus 1 half of m r1 omega 1 squared, which will be 1 half of m. This will cancel. Uh, sorry, the other way around. This will Cancel this. And we'll have the omega 1 squared. And we have the r1 to the fourth over r2 squared minus r1 squared. That's going to be the work of the fourth. So f times d. And the d equals to r1 minus r2. So f times r1 minus r2 equals to 1 half of m omega 1 squared r1 to the fourth over r2 to the squared minus r1 squared. We can probably factor out the r1 squared. We'll have the 1 half of m omega 1 squared, r1 squared. And uh, we'll have r1 squared over r2 squared minus 1, OK? Which will be, let's do it again, 1 half of m omega 1 squared, r1 squared, r2 squared. There's going to be r1 squared minus r2 squared. And that's f times r1 minus r2 equals to this. And now we multi we factor this one, and that will be r1 minus r2 over r1 plus r2. So that will be just r1 plus r2. And the result will have that f equals 2. m omega 1 squared r1 squared r1 plus r2 over 2 r2 squared. Okay. So far, any questions? Solve another problem. I'll go to the next page. Okay. Let's look at problem number. Let's say 191.
Here, a particle moves on a spiral. This is the R, and there is the theta. And we have the equation of the spiral R equals to 10 e to the power of 0.2 theta. That's the equation of a spiral. It's given that theta equals to 0.5 t squared. Determine the radial and transverse components of the velocity and acceleration at t equals to two seconds. t equals to two seconds. Find the radial uh, vr and v theta. Oh, pardon me. V theta at that moment. And also ar and a theta. That's purely mathematics, all right? We'll use the following formulas. We derived these formulas last time, and we use them vr equals to r dot, v, v theta equals to r theta dot, a sub r equals to r double dot minus r theta dot squared, and a sub theta equals to um, uh, let's see. I think it's r theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot. All right, okay. So we use these and we use chain rule and we'll find whatever we need to find, right? Okay. So that's fine. We need the theta dot. Theta dot equals to uh, 0.5 times 2t. This can be just t. Uh, theta double dot equals to 1. The r dot. r dot equals to N times 0.2 times e to the 0.2. It's going to be d over dt of 10 e to the 0.2 theta. And then it's going to be 10 times 0.2 times e to the 2 theta, a to the 0.2 theta, and times theta dot which is t, right? And that's going to be 20 t e to the point 2 theta. And theta equals to 0.5 t squared, right? That's going to be 20 t e to the point 2 times 0.5 t squared which is going to be 20 t e to the 0.1 t squared. That's the r dot, which happens to be exactly the r, right? We can put the time in there and we'll get it there, okay? Uh, the, the theta equals to r theta dot. And the R is B, just a second, 10 e to the 10 e to the point two, I believe point two theta times theta dot, which is T. And it's going to be. 10 t e to the 0 0.2 times 0 0.5 t squared. And this is going to be 10 t 
e to the point one t squared. That's the v theta, right? Okay. Similarly, a sub r equals to r double dot minus r theta dot squared. Uh, we found the, did you find the r double dot? Not yet, right? Okay. So r double dot equals to d over dt of r dot. And the r dot we found as 20 t e to the point one t squared. Twenty t e to the point one t squared. And that's going to be twenty. Uh, is going to be e to the point one t squared. And plus t times point one uh, times two t e to the point 1 t squared this is going to be 20 e to the point 1 t squared and this will be 1 plus 0.2 t squared this is our double dot and then we'll have that a sub r equals to this one 20 e to the point 1 t squared 1 plus 0.2 t squared. It's our double dot minus r, which is 10 e to the 0.2 theta, which is uh, 0.5 t squared. Uh, that's r. And times theta dot squared. And theta dot was found to be a t. Square, right? So that's going to be e to the point 1 t squared. And here it's going to be 20 plus 20, plus 20 times 0.2 t squared. And plus... 10, and, sorry, and minus, minus 10 t squared, right? Now that's 20 times 0.2 t squared will be 4 t squared. Minus 6 is going to be e to the 0.1 t squared, 20 minus 6 t squared, a sub r. And a sub theta is... Well, similarly, you have to take these derivatives and find them, okay? Any questions about this problem? Pretty straightforward, right? Let's do another interesting one. Let's see. Take another one. Well, let's take number 198. Write the equation of motion for a system consisting of a particle attached through a spring. This is M, this is K. And that's the theta. Double check if this is 
Okay, so this here system has two degrees of freedom. Uh, two degrees of freedom. One of them is the theta, the other one is r. Okay. So we need to have Uh, we'll write down the equation on theta, right? Okay. Let's look at the forces. This is mg. And uh, this is k times. Let's make it r. Okay. okay. Write down, uh, let's say that's going to be the normal axis. This is the tangential axis. All right. In normal direction, we'll have the minus kr. plus mg cos theta equals to m r double dot. Well, that's not the only acceleration. Let's be think about it. V square over R. And R double dot minus R theta dot squared. All right, okay. That's the A sub R in polar coordinates, right? Okay. In a radial direction, let's put it in the R direction, right? in theta direction, or T, the force will be just mg sine theta, nothing else, right there, right, equals to m times r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta double. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Go to the next page. We have about five minutes left. That's problem number one, one or two. We have a cart here on wheels. The mass is here. The spring, that's mass, a little m. We have a spring here connecting it to the mass big M. There is a particle of mass mu that's moving with velocity v and it gets embedded, right? Okay. A composite spring mass, uh, and that thing is not, that's not m, that's w. Okay. Let me just look it up again. A bullet of mass mu and velocity v is embedded into a small block of mass m. Neglecting frictional effects, determine the maximum compression delta of the spring in terms of v, k, mu, m, and capital M. Oh. 
it's capital M. Oh, this is capital M. Okay, this is W. That's um, my picture is off a little bit. Just, it's more like a wedge. So that's the wedge. It's not the mass. It's the wedge right there. It's connected to that. Wind. Maximum compression delta of the spring. By the time that it takes for the spring to reach maximum compression. By the time T1 to reach maximum compression. The maximum compression of the spring if the bolt is fired into the cart instead. What if bullet is fired into cart, into cart M. Well, we have to do a lot of conservation laws. We're probably out of time, so we'll do it next time, right? Okay. Next time. Might start like mu v equals to m plus mu times v1. That's the velocity of this mass, but the right, okay. Uh, there is no friction, so it just goes there, right, okay. There is no friction, so it's not transferred to the mass there, right? Okay. So we'll do it again next time. All right. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you, Professor.